did you feel during this race? Uh, the swim, I didn't feel so good. The bike started to pick it up, and the run, I felt really good the first half. Je me suis pas très très bien senti pendant la natation. Par contre, au niveau du cyclisme, c'est vite redevenu. Et la deuxième partie de la course à pied de cyclisme était difficile. Ensuite, je suis revenu au niveau de la course à pied. Et là, j'ai pu, toujours en ayant un petit peu peur quand même, reprendre la tête de la course. J'ai eu assez peur quand je me suis retrouvé loin au niveau de la, de la natation. Parce qu'il y avait de très très bons athlètes devant moi, notamment Richard Wells et Cook. Et ensuite, il fallait que je revienne euh, tranquillement à mon rythme sur tout le monde pour pouvoir gagner. Quand j'ai vu que j'avais 35 secondes d'avance en course à pied sur Glenn, là je me suis dit normalement j'ai gagné. Was it important for you to, to win the first uh, championship, world championship? This is definitely one of the biggest races of my entire eight years of triathlon. C'est vraiment une des plus belles courses que j'ai fait depuis que j'ai fait du triathlon. This is the race that will get our sport into the Olympics. Je me suis complètement préparé. J'espère que ce sport sera un sport olympique. Et j'espère faire de tout mon mieux pour aider ce sport à devenir olympique. Hi everybody, Ross here, and this is episode two of the Streak podcast. Today I'm going to tell you about the first triathlon I ever did, more than 32 years ago. Now that audio you just heard was of the first ITU World Short Course Championships from Avignon, France. It was broadcast on the French television station Canal Plus. From my home in Slough, I couldn't tune in to that live race coverage on the 6th of August 1989, but since then I've definitely made up for it by watching the whole race on YouTube about 20 times. But I was already a big fan of triathlon back then, and as my triathlon hero, Glenn Cook, finished second in Avignon, I had to get my hands on a copy of the next issue of Triathlete magazine to read the long-form race report. In the 1980s, before the internet and live streams, and even before Eurosport started broadcasting triathlons, These magazine articles were all we had to find out the results and understand the racing. The Slough High Street branch of WH Smith only ever stocked one copy of each issue of Triathlete, and on several occasions I'd been beaten to it by another Slough-based triathlete. Who was this person? After a few weeks of daily after-school loitering in the shop, I got my hands on the mag. The front cover had an amazing photo of Cook running toe-to-toe -to -toe with third-place finisher Rick Wells. I've included a scan of that cover in the show notes, but I'm also planning on doing a full Avignon podcast episode soon. Cook had cut his Ron Hill vest navel high and felt tipped GBR across his chest. Both athletes had their moustaches pinned back from the speed and the sweat as they tried to keep Mark Allen in their sights. As Glenn was riding himself into medal contention, he was doing it on a Dave Russell bike. Dave was the British team mechanic for the Avignon trip, and his bikes were super popular with triathletes at the time. Dave's kids swam at my swimming club, and I bumped into him at the pool on his return. He regaled me with tales from Avignon, and we discussed the progress he was making with the bike I'd ordered. A fluo green and white Reynolds 501 frame with a Shimano 105 group set and Mavic MA2 rims. I'd finished my first triathlon just four months earlier, having started to run in primary school after watching the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics on TV. That winter, I joined a small local athletics club. I mainly ran cross country, but also did some track and sometimes even the jumps and throws. In 1988, when that club closed, I moved to a running-only club. They had plenty of good athletes, though, so I trained hard and improved steadily year on year. My focus was now cross-country, with the occasional local road race thrown in for experience. I was pretty dedicated to running and really enjoyed it, but in age group terms, as a 16-year-old, I was definitely a middle-of-the-packer. But that dedication to pure running was about to change. In the July 1987 issue of Today's Runner magazine, I read an article titled Trying the Try. On the front cover there was a small photo of Erin Baker, 
probably taken at Nice in 1986. Spoiler alert, this was the year she was disqualified for accepting a drink from her sister who was spectating. The article opened with, quote, How many of you have ever wondered about tackling a triathlon? All you fit runners are capable of having a go without drowning in the pool, falling off the bike or tripping over in the run. Fionn Lawler recently had a try, T-R-I, survived to tell the tale and is now looking forward to the next one. End quote. The journalist Fionn Lawler then documents how she borrows a bike and despite being nervous about the swim, uses her running fitness to finish her first short pool-based triathlon in Peterborough. The article also had everything I needed to know about triathlon, how to train, what to wear, how to find races and a list of shops to buy tri kit. I knew I got pretty excited after reading the article, but for some reason I didn't take action and enter a race that year. A similar article was published again in Today's Runner in 1988, but this time with a list of beginners triathlons or trier tries that the magazine was helping to promote. There was going to be an event in all 10 BTA regions of England and in Scotland and Wales. The Southern Region event was to be held in Wokingham. It was organised by Thames Valley Triathletes, Britain's first triathlon club. Pretty much all triathlons were organised by clubs back then. So the same day I bought the magazine, I cut out the entry form, filled it in, put it into an envelope and rushed it to the post office. But I forgot to include a cheque for the £5 entry fee. Worried that the race would fill up before I could forward the money or get another magazine, I spent a few hours sitting next to the post box on Sippenham Lane. I had to beg the postman for the envelope before putting the money in and sellotaping it up. Phew. My preparation for the event started early in 1989 by making my first trip to the specialist triathlon shop Total Fitness in Swindon. I bought the book Dave Scott's Triathlon Training and some Tinley Lace Locks. I also joined a new local triathlon club, Berkshire Tri Squad, and started training for the race. Swimming was mainly done solo at Montem Leisure Centre and I started to do longer bike rides around Berkshire. The race was held on the 7th of May 1989 at Martin's Pool. I just googled it. Unfortunately, it closed down in 1992. It was a classic Lido with a wooden entrance structure, sloping lawns, a snack bar and super cold water. The bike course was out and back towards Twyford and the run went around the houses of Wokingham. A few weeks before the event, I rode from Slough to Twyford, did the bike course backwards and then cycled home, a round trip of about 80 kilometres, my longest ever ride and my first bonk. My bike was a powder blue 10-speed Peugeot Elan. I rode it with the seat right down and my running shoes slotted loosely into chrome toe clips. Helmets were fairly new, but I had the Vetter Corsa. It was the same helmet as one of my triathlete magazine heroes, Mark Marabini, wore. I bought mine from Stowe's Cycles in Slough. They were well known for their friendly service, said nobody ever. It might not have been lightweight, but it was safe as it was made from military-grade, bulletproof Kevlar. Despite having to switch to breaststroke for a few lengths during the swim, I picked up plenty of places on the bike, and my transition practices on Sippenham Green allowed me to finish with a strong run. As I crossed the finish line, I knew this was the most exciting sporting thing I'd ever done. I'd also posted a pretty competitive time. The results and some photos were printed in the June 1989 issue of British Triathlon Scene. You can see them in the show notes. Here's the accompanying article written by Steve True. Quote, Today's runner and New Balance combine to give hundreds of first-timers a try. T-R-I. It doesn't really matter what the results were. Everyone who finished after entering this new challenge was a winner anyway. The length and breadth of the country played host to hesitant newcomers in our sport. Perhaps lurking amongst them was a Springman, a Coop, a Shrewsbury or a Cook. That doesn't really matter either. What does matter is that everybody had their first taste 
and hopefully they will be bitten by the bug that already holds us all in its thrall. The pictorial essay laid out below says far more than I can in mere words. Have a look, read the results and just be happy that you're involved in the best sport that we know. End quote. I raced another three or four times in 1989, including a junior event at East Grinstead and the National Junior Championships at Holm Pierpont, which was Spencer Smith's first triathlon. My brother, who was only 11 at the time, also competed a few times. And in August, a swimming club tour slash family holiday took us to Florida, where we managed to pick up some pretty hard-to-get tri kit. But more on that later. So heading into the winter of 1989 and 1990, and although I was only 16, I'd already made the decision that I wanted to be a professional triathlete, like this guy. Avec Glenn Cook, le second de ce championnat du monde de triathlon. Congratulations, Glenn. Thank you very much. How are you disappointed by this uh, second place? I'm very happy. Very happy indeed. Um, I train all season for this race in particular. Je suis très content de terminer deuxième. Je me sens très, très spécifiquement pour cette course. C'est vraiment très heureux. It would have been nice to win, but Évidemment, ça I think bien de gagner. for me, I gave my best performance today. And I did all I tout mon possible pour. Je suis vraiment très content d'être second. Mark Allen is too strong for the other three athletes. Today, yes, he's, this year he's been very, very good. And um, I think uh, coming into the run, he must have been very confident. Aujourd'hui, en fait, toute l'année, uh, il est vraiment au-dessus du lot. The right the la course à pied, il est vraiment trop, trop fort. Il n'a absolument rien à faire contre lui. And after that, he chased hard, but um, there was in case he tired, but he was strong all the way. Thank you, Glenn. Okay, thanks. So thanks for listening. The show notes for this episode are at thestreakpodcast.com forward slash podcast forward slash two. If you've got a question, a correction, some extra historical information, or just want to say hi, you can email me at thestreakpodcast at gmail.com. I'll leave you with another clip from Avignon. This time it's the women's winner, Erin Baker, crossing the finish line. Et voici l'arrivée d'Erin Baker. Erin Baker dans ce sprint final. Elle se retourne une nouvelle fois, mais elle va être couronnée championne du monde. Alors que Jeanne Ripple n'est pas très loin derrière, Jeanne Ripple. Oui, oui, oui. Jeanne Ripple est peut-être à une dizaine de secondes derrière, mais cela sera suffisant pour la Néo-Zélandaise devenir la meilleure, euh, la première championne du monde. Dans un temps de 2h10, semble-t-il, temps officieux, bien entendu. Remarquable performance euh, de la meilleure triathlète du monde, qui, comme Marc Allen, s'impose, c'était la favorite, elle s'impose. Et son état de fraîcheur est tout de même étonnant. Suis en deuxième position, Jacques Nicole, son but était d'être dans les trois premières. Elle sera deuxième. Elle était sortie en tête après le vélo. Une trentaine de secondes de retard, c'est très beau. Erin, Erin, were you strong uh, during all this race? Thank you, you run. <laughs> How do you feel? How do you feel with this title? Oh, I'm very, very, very happy. Je suis très, très heureuse d'être championne du monde. Was it hard? Yeah. Yes, it was very hard. Which part of the race was the hardest? Run. I had a... la, la course à pied était la part.